In this section, we're going to start looking at using our visual scripting solution, Playmaker. And to do that, we're just going to jump right into the fire and start using it. And I'm not going to explain too much, but we're just going to go through and I'll, I'll explain sort of each part as I go through it. And in the next section, in the next video, we're going to deep dive more and sort of dig and take things apart. I just want to, in this video, just get into it so when we do talk about it and take things apart, you sort of have an idea of what we're talking about. And sometimes it's hard to visualize the end product without having seen it first, so let's just go ahead and do that first. Now what we're going to do in this scene is create a trigger area that when we walk through it, that it plays a specific sound. So in this case, even though we're just on our demo scene here still, imagine that we're walking into a castle or into a dungeon or something, and as we enter the door, we want some more ominous music to play. We want something to let us know that, you know, the scene has changed. So that's what we're going to do. Now, the first thing we're going to do is actually use this cube to help us um, make the trigger. Now, we're using this box collider for our trigger area. And we'll go to the scene view, and I want my trigger area to be, say, nice and large over here, just like this. And I'm going to stretch out this uh, cube to cover the whole area that I want this uh, trigger to be. I'm just going to stretch it out like this, and I want it to be about say this big so if it's this size there's no way someone could get you know get past this without having to walk through it so as we know right now though with this box collider on someone is just gonna walk and bump into it they won't be able to get past it and so how we make that possible is we change this box collider into a trigger by saying is trigger so when this happens, our character will be able to walk through because it's no longer a collider, but has changed into a trigger area. See? The next thing we want to do is turn off the mesh renderer. We don't want people to see the trigger area. Or perhaps we could have the trigger areas being um, you know, somewhat transparent, like partially translucent, but in this case we just want to make it completely clear. So what we're going to do is just turn off this mesh renderer so that the mesh is no longer being rendered. We'll move it up and we can see our trigger area here. And right now our, our box collider, which is our trigger, is set to the size of 1, 1, 1. This means that it matches the size of the cube exactly. We could actually change the size of the trigger to not match the cube by adding, as you can see on the screen, we can make it larger and smaller this way as well. Because sometimes you want your trigger outside of it, or maybe you want a collider that's larger than your wall. So this is how you can do that. But for now, I'm just going to set this to 1, 1, 1 and turn off the mesh render, and this works perfectly for me. Now, to set off a trigger, you're going to need something else. You're going to need something to pass through the trigger. In this case, it's our third-person controller, and if we have a look, we see that this also has a collider on it called a capsule collider. Now, colliders can come in different shapes and sizes. If we go Add Component, we can add a collider and just type collider and you can see the different types of colliders so we're interested in just the 3d ones so we have box collider capsule collider and we also have something called mesh collider now we'll talk about the mesh collider a little bit later but the mesh collider can fit the shape of your object exactly and you might be asking, okay, well, why don't we use a mesh collider because it would be more accurate? Well, unfortunately, a mesh collider does take up a lot more memory for your game, so your game's going to potentially run slower if you have many, many mesh colliders and you're using physics. So if we can get away with using box and capsule colliders as much as possible, the better off we are. So in this case, 
where our character Ethan, this capsule collider, is good enough. So we have a collider on the object. We want to pass through the trigger. And we also have one more requirement. Now this is a requirement that a lot of people who are starting out with Unity forget, is that one of these things must also have a rigid body on it. It must have a rigid body. And so usually we just put the rigid body on the collider area, if it's not anywhere else. So Ethan does have a rigid body, so it's no problem. But if we imagine that Ethan didn't have a rigid body, we already have one here on the uh, cube. So I'm going to change this cube to, I'll call it trigger area. Okay, You can call this whatever you want. It doesn't have to be this name. Oopsie. It doesn't have to be this name. It can be whatever helps you remember it. But I, I do recommend naming everything right away. Okay, so the trigger area already has a rigid body, and we're going to make sure it's set to kinematic because we want it to float, we don't want it to fall, and we don't want any gravity applied to it because it's not necessary, and therefore if there is gravity applied, again, it's just going to make our game slower with adding things that we really don't need. Okay, so we've got one box collider changed into a trigger with a rigid body, another collider that's going to move through and trigger it, and now we need it to actually do something. And what I wanted to do is play a sound, so that some kind of om ominous sound or something as we enter this area. So I'm going to go to Playmaker. I've got my Playmaker window, and I need to select a game object to put on my Playmaker script. So a Playmaker script is called an FSM. And it's not technically a script, but it works very similar to scripts. So to do this, to add an FSM, we just click on the game object we want, then right click in the window and say add FSM. And the instructions are right here, right click to add FSM. And as we add our first FSM, you can see that this red Playmaker icon shows up on the trigger area to let us know there is a FSM on it as well as we look in the inspector we can see that there is now a playmaker FSM so in fact an FSM is just a component just like a rigid body, a mesh renderer, a box collider, anything else so we could add another FSM just by choosing add component and typing FSM and getting the playmaker FSM so now we have two I don't want to, it's going to be confusing so I'm just going to delete this one by remove component now again, it's good practice to give your FSM uh, a description right away. So I'm going to call this plays, uh, you know, scary music when trigger is entered. And you can see on the background of your FSM, it shows you right here. I'm not actually going to change the name of my FSM, and we'll talk about that later. But for now, at the beginning, I recommend you just leave them all named FSM. Okay, so you're probably not familiar with states, actions, and events, and we're going to talk about that in more detail in the next lecture. So for now, I just want you to follow along. So this is our first state, and it's called state 1. So when the game starts, it's going to go from start to state 1. So in state 1, I'm just going to call this whatever I want. You can give it whatever name comes to your little heart. I'm going to call this wait for trigger because that's what it's doing. So for me that helps. And the description is going to be wait for the player game object to enter the trigger area before playing music. So again the description can be whatever you want. I've just added a description that helps me know what I want to do. So the first part is I want it to wait for a trigger. Once it's been triggered, I know what I want next. So I'm going to add another state. Right click, add state. And I'm going to call this one play music. And my description is going to be once, uh, you know, player. Uh, 
has triggered this, uh, I guess, area, then play some music. Okay, so now we've blocked out what we want it to do. Now we have to actually give it the actions to do it and then connect them together. So I'm going to start with playing the music. I'm going to start with the end product of what I want. And I'm going to click on this button that says Action Browser. And it's going to pop open a new window. And I'll dock it way over here. And it's fairly customary for people to dock their action window here. So you'll see that in a lot of tutorials. And if you clear the search bar, these are going to show all the different categories of actions that you can use. Actions are just something that happens in the game. And again, we're going to talk about this a little bit more in the next video. But right now, what I want is some type of audio action. So I'm going to click on audio and see what we've got. We've got audio mute, pause, play, stop audio, random audio, play sound. So two of these look really similar. We have one called play sound, and we have one called audio play. Now if we look down at the bottom, it gives us a description as to what this action specifically does. So what I want to actually use is I'm going to use one called audio play, and we'll get into these audio differences more uh, later on in the audio section. But for now, let's just choose audio play, and to add it to this state, I'm just going to double click it, and now it's been added. And it's giving me a warning message says, game object requires audio source component. So if you remember from before, we look back at our inspector, we looked at our ambient noise and our background music, we had an audio source component. So it's saying that on this trigger area, we need an audio source component. So if we look at the trigger area, it does not have an audio source component on it. We could manage this in two ways. One is we could add the component manually ourselves by searching audio source and clicking on it, and the error message will go away. Or Playmaker makes this easy for us, and it, if we just click here on it, it will add one automatically. So note that it's adding the audio source to where? Which game object? The owner. The owner is this trigger area. Because the FSM's on this trigger area game object, it considers it the owner. So we're going to have the volume play at one. We're just going to play the audio clip once. So instead of setting it here in the audio source, we're going to set it in Playmaker. And uh, if I can remember which audio clip I wanted to use here, I will have to check. Let's do that. I'm going to go back to my project. I'm going to go to my sounds. I think I wanted um, this cave ambiance. And we're going to go to music. And uh, let's try the cave melody too. Okay, yeah, I like that Cave Melody 3, so let's do that one. So we'll go back to the trigger area, choose Playmaker, and here in the audio clips, I'm going to choose, uh, geez, now what was it? Cave, Cave Melody. If we click this, we can see this easier. Cave Melody 3. Okay, so now we need some way to activate this music because when it starts, it's just going to go to here. So let's save it and take a look what happens. As you can see, it went from start to wait for trigger, but then it stops, the flow stops there. So we don't want it to flow to here directly, we want it only to flow there once we reach this uh, trigger area. So let's go to Actions, and then type the word Trigger and see what we can get. So we want this one called Trigger Event, and you can go ahead and remember this because you're going to end up using this a lot. These are one of the ones that you'll use, you know, 
you know, 10, 50, 100 times in your game. So I'm going to double click trigger event to add it to this state. And it says we have different options. On trigger enter is when something enters this trigger area. We have on trigger stay is which when something's staying in the area or on trigger exit when something's exited the area. So I want this to start as soon as something enters it. And when that happens, we want it to send an event. So we're going to have to create a new event here. And we can call the event whatever we want. These are, very, these are arbitrary names, so just to help us remember what's happening. So I'm just going to call mine trigger entered. And it's telling me there's no event yet in the screen. So what we can do is just click this red button and it's going to add the event here at the bottom. So the top is the state with the actions, the bottom is the event. And I can click on the event, hold and drag over to play music. So for events you just click and drag them to attach to whatever you want. We only have one target here so we can just let it go there. So again, just to remind you, as people get hung up with this, the name of the state, the descriptions, the events are all arbitrary. You can just call them whatever you want to help you remember what's going on. Now let's give this a try and see what happens. Okay, I've got my headset on so I can hear this better. And I'm just going to walk Ethan over to this area. And as you can see, as I moved through, it triggered the music to play. And if we move through again and again, nothing will happen because it's gone to this uh, trigger state and has no way to go back. Now, if we did want this to potentially go back, there's a finished event here, and it says here in the description, event to send when the audio clip finishes playing. So let's try and make a new event, and I'll call this music finished, and click the red box to add the event automatically. And when the music's finished, we want it to go back to the trigger wait state. So if we play this, we'll walk through the trigger, and once this music is done, it should go back to wait for another trigger event. Awesome, so now we can re-trigger this as many times as we want. Perfect, so now you've set up your first trigger event on trigger event. And like I said, this is, you know, the bread and butter of Unity is using trigger events to trigger all kinds of things. You know, we don't have to use this to trigger music. We can use this to trigger uh, traps we're going to see later on, trigger to pick up money, or all kinds of things. So this is a really great way to do this. So now, in the next video, I want you to watch through and the next video was, was recorded out of context of this course. It was recorded for something else, but it really goes over what actions and states and events are and gives a bunch of you know, small examples that you can follow along and really understand. So even if you don't watch the whole next video, please watch the first few minutes and really try to get an understanding of actions, events, and uh, what did I say? Actions, events, and states, sorry. <laughs> then after that video we're gonna keep looking at one more uh, key thing which is using um, uh, collider effects, collider events. Okay, so see you in the next video.